Hello students, welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel, Toma Chang Tutorial. Myself, Kishan Kulung, and today we are ready to go for a new chapter in chemistry called Chemical Calculations, Stoichiometric Equations, okay? Before going to the chapter, let us read out the law related to chemical reactions. This law was proposed by a very famous scientist named Lavoisier. Lavoisier in the year 1774, okay? Now let us quickly read out the law and then understand. The law states that the total mass of the reactants before chemical reaction is equal to the total mass of the products after chemical reaction. Mass can neither be created nor can be destroyed. Okay, let us understand this. Let me give an example to make you understand this better. Suppose, substance A chemically reacts with substance B to produce substance C and substance D. Okay, I'm giving an example. Substance A chemically combined with substance B to produce substance C and substance D. Let us assume the mass of substance A is A gram, okay, and the mass of substance B is B gram. Now, let us again assume the mass of substance C is C gram and the mass of substance D is D gram. So, according to the law, the law says the total mass of the reactants, that means mass of substance A plus mass of substance B, that is A plus B gram, the total mass of the reactants is equal to the total mass of the products that is C plus D gram okay mass is not lost during chemical reaction this is what the law says total mass of the reactants is equal to the total mass of the products mass is not gained mass is not lost during chemical reaction okay mass remains constant before and after the chemical reaction this is what the law says but please take the screenshot of this and going for the next topic but a very famous mathematician named einstein gave his equation e equal to mc square okay this is a very famous equation we all know about this equation where e is the energy e is energy m is the mass of the substance M is mass of the substance, mass of the substance, or mass, let us say mass. C is the velocity of light, velocity of light. And we know the velocity of light, that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second in air, okay? Now, this law, According, according to this equation, we can see that mass can be converted into energy. This equation proves that mass can be converted into energy because energy equal to mass into velocity of light squared, which means mass of a substance can be converted into energy. So during chemical reactions like, let us, let me give you an example, suppose quicklime Calcium oxide, we call this as quicklime. Quicklime reacts with water to produce calcium hydroxide. This is slacker lime, isn't it? When quicklime reacts with water to produce slacker lime, what happens is this is an example of exothermic reaction. This is an example of exothermic reaction, okay? Exothermic reaction. In this type of reaction, what happens is when quicklime reacts with water, some amount of heat is liberated from the chemical reaction. Some amount of heat energy is released, which means when these two compounds chemically react, some amount of heat is converted, some amount of mass is converted into heat energy because heat energy is liberated. So, according to this equation, some amount of mass is converted into heat. When quicklime reacts with water, some amount of mass is converted into heat. That means the sum total of mass of these two reactants will not be exactly equal to mass of the product, mass of the slacker line. Got my point? 
sum total of mass of the reactants will not be exactly equal to mass of the product because some mass of the reactants has been converted into energy but we do not consider generally we do not consider the amount of mass lost during chemical reaction because let me explain this okay let me explain this here we have e equal to mc square and c is the velocity of light let us assume uh, mass of the substance is one gram okay e equal to e equal to let us assume the mass of the substance is one gram one gram into velocity of light is you know 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second square 3 into 10 to the power 8 squared okay that means 1 gram into 3 into 10 to the power 8 means 3 into okay 3 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 zeros after 3 isn't it and this is squared okay 1 gram into 3 when squared becomes 3 squared is 9 and this 8 squared 8 zeros squared is 16 zeros 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and 16 one gram into this <laughs> hey excuse me one gram into this is nine one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen erg okay even one gram of substance when converted into energy releases this much amount of energy so the amount of energy released is very very high for even a small quantity of mass isn't it even one gram of mass releases this much amount of energy then in this type of chemical reaction where heat energy is liberated but heat energy is not that that much high heat energy is very little as compared to this isn't it so when little amount of heat energy is lost though the total mass of the reactants is not equal to the total mass of the product but mass lost is negligible a very little amount of mass is lost so we do not consider the mass lost during chemical reaction okay i hope you got my point now let us rewrite the law of conservation of energy in the modified form including einstein equation okay <clears throat> Now the modified form of law of conservation of energy can be written as sum total of sum total of mass of the reactants sum total of mass and energy okay mass and energy of the reactants before chemical reaction is equal to the sum total of mass and energy of the products products after chemical reaction okay now we include energy mass is not lost during chemical reaction mass is not created during chemical reaction but mass can be converted into energy okay now therefore mass can be converted into energy and we have rewritten the law of conservation of energy of chemical reaction in this form some total of mass and energy of the reactants before chemical reaction is equal to the sum total of mass and energy of the products after chemical reaction got a point okay now let us understand we have finished the conservation of energy now let us understand 
the topic mole okay because we are going to discuss about stoichiometric equation and this equation uh, while solving the chemical calculations we need to understand mole first let me make it clear what mole is mole mole actually mole means the amount of substance okay mole means the amount of substance so one mole one mole of any gas any gas at stp occupies occupies 22.4 liter volume or 22400 cm cube volume okay one mole of any gas at stp occupies 22.4 liter or 22400 cm cube of volume mole is the amount okay and one mole one mole of a gas contain contain avogadro's number of molecules avogadro's number of molecules molecules and what is avogadro's number avogadro's number is avogadro's number is 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 this is avogadro number and one mole of gas contains this much number of molecules 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 molecules okay another thing we need to understand before going to chemical calculation is molecular weight of substance okay let me give you an example molecular weight molecular weight how do we find molecular weight of let me give you an example suppose what is the molecular weight of carbon dioxide co2 molecular weight of carbon dioxide is 12 12 is the molecular weight of carbon plus oxygen the molecular weight of oxygen is 16 atomic weight of oxygen is 16 into 2 so the molecular weight of oxygen is 16 into 2 atomic weight of oxygen is 16 into this 2 so 12 plus 16 to the 32 that is 2 plus 2 4 3 plus 1 4 44 gram we find molecular weight in this way okay suppose we have KClO3 okay let us calculate the molecular weight of potassium chloride KClO3 potassium is 39 plus chlorine is 35.5 plus oxygen is 16 into 3 atomic weight of oxygen is 16 so multiplied by this 3 okay uh, 39 plus 35.5 plus 16 3 is 48 now let us add up 8 plus 5 13 plus 9 13 plus 9 is 22 2 2 in hand 4 plus 3 7 plus 3 10 10 plus 2 is 12 122 and this 0.5 this is the way how we calculate the molecular weight of substance this is also needed during chemical reaction now the most important part before going to the chemical reaction what we need to understand is how to balance the chemical equations okay let us learn to balance the chemical equation and then we will proceed further to solve stoichiometric equations or chemical calculations okay <clears throat> suppose let me give you an example carbon monoxide burns in presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide gas if this is the chemical reaction and we want to balance this chemical reaction or we are needed to balance this chemical reaction then it's very very easy because we have two oxygens in the right hand side and we have two and one that is three oxygens in the left hand side so we can easily balance this chemical equation just by putting two here it becomes two oxygen 
two oxygen that is four oxygen we have two oxygens here so let us put two so it becomes two oxygen it's uh, sorry two to the four oxygen and two carbon here two carbon well putting the number we can only put in the front not in the subscript okay we cannot put down here in the subscript we can put only as a coefficient 2co plus o2 equal to 2co2 this is a balanced chemical equation we have to balance the equation first and then only we can solve chemical calculations numerical problem okay this is a simple equation if the equation comes like this then we need not follow long method but if for example if butane the formula for butane is c4 h10 if butane burns in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water then it is a little tough one how to balance this equation you cannot just go on writing the number and balance the chemical equation very simply so to balance this type of chemical reaction we need to follow simple steps which i will teach you please follow with me to balance this type of chemical reaction first write a in front of this number c4 h10 write b in front of o2 write c in front of co2 and write d in front of h2 okay after that we have carbon hydrogen and oxygen in this chemical reaction isn't it first of all let us talk about carbon carbon okay please follow the rules i am trying to teach now carbon is we are talking about carbon only carbon is in the left hand side 4 into a okay 4 into a is 4a plus no carbon here so no plus in the right hand side equal to in the right hand side we have only one carbon so there is one in the subscript below one so one into c is this one into this c is c now carbon is finished next element is hydrogen so let us talk about hydrogen hydrogen okay now hydrogen we have in the left hand side 10 into a that is 10 a got my point 10 into a is 10 a no hydrogen here so equal to in the right hand side we have here hydrogen 2 into d is 2 d 2 into d is 2 d and another element is oxygen so another element is oxygen so in the left hand side we have this 2 into b is 2 b okay equal to in the right hand side we have 2 oxygen so first 2 into c this 2 is for oxygen 2 into c is 2 c plus here only one there is no number in the subscript so you should understand there is one one into d is d 1d or d okay now we got the equations now among this a b c and d the alphabet which occurs the most we should consider that alphabet equals to one here we have a here we have a here we have b here we have no b here we have c here we have c either a or b or uh, either a or c or d is repeated again and again so let us consider a okay let a equals to 1 what we do a equals to 1 then here 4a means 4 into 1 equal to c that means c equal to 4 1 is a 4 we got the value of c as 4 here we have 10 into a so a is 1 10 into 1 equal to 2d that means 10 into 1 is 10 divided by this 2 comes down equal to d d means 5 isn't it d means d equals to 2 5 to 10 d equals to 5 here 2b equal to 2c c we know the value of c c is 4 2c means 2 into 4 2 into 4 plus d means 5 we have the value of d as 5 so b equals to 2 for the 8 isn't it 2 for the 8 8 plus 5 is 13 and this b comes down b is 13 by 2 13 by 2 now we need not do anything just write the value in the front okay a means here is a 
A means we have put A as 1, okay? And B means B is how much? We got the value of B as 13 by 12. B is 13 by 12. Got my point? And C means C is how much? C means C is 4. So we put the value of C here, 4. And D means D is 5. So we put the value of D as 5 here, okay? 5. Got my point? But in a chemical reaction, there should not be a 13 by 2. B is 13 by 2. B is 13 by 2. This is 13 by 2. In a chemical reaction, we should not have fractions like this, 13 by 2. So we multiply this whole chemical reaction by 2 to eliminate this number from the denominator, that is 2, okay? So please take the screenshot of this. I'm going to erase this all. Now, when we multiply whole equation with 2, what do we get is 2 into 1 is 2. C4 as 10 plus 2 into 13 by 2 is 2 and 2 cancel. So 13 O2 equal to 2 for the 8 CO2 plus 2 5 the 10 H2O. Now this equation is 100% balanced. This is the way how you balance complicated equations. Okay. Now let us check. Carbon is 2 for the 8. Here we have 8 carbon. Hydrogen is 10 to the 20. And hydrogen 2 to the 20. And oxygen is 13 to the 26. Oxygen is 2 to the 16. Plus 10 is 26. Oxygen is also balanced. Let us take an, another example to understand better. Suppose acetylene. I am erasing this. Okay. Let me erase this. Suppose. Acetylene gas burns in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay. How do you balance this equation? C2H2 plus O2 equal. CO2 plus O2. Okay. That's true. Let us write A in front of C2H2, B in front of O2, C and D. Okay. Now, first the element carbon. Let us write carbon. Are you getting my point? This is carbon. So here carbon 2 into A. This 2 into A. 2A. No carbon in the left hand side. But in the right hand side we have 1 carbon. So 1 is in the subscript. If there is no number you should understand there is 1. 1 into C is C. Now another element we have hydrogen. Isn't it? Hydrogen. Okay. 2 into A is, this hydrogen has 2, so 2 into A is 2A and no other hydrogen in the left hand side. In the right hand side we have here hydrogen, 2 into D is 2D, 2D, okay. Now another element is oxygen, oxygen, so in the left hand side we have here oxygen, 2 into B is 2B equal to, in the right hand side we have 2 oxygen, so 2 into C equal to 2C plus 1 into D is D. Okay. Now let us assume A to be 1. Let A equal to 1. We should suppose that letter to be 1 which occurs the most in the chemical uh, in these equations. Okay. Since A occurs here and A occurs here, D also occurs two times. Uh, so A can be considered as 1 or D can be considered as 1. I am considering A as 1. Okay. So value of C is how much? C is C equals to 2 into A. That is 2 into 1 because A is 1. 2 into 1 is 2. C is 2. Here we have A is 1. 2 into 1. 2 into 1 equal to 2D. So D equal to 2 into 1 is 2. This 2 comes down. Cancel. D equals to 1. Okay, here 2B equal to 2C. C we have 2. C equals to 2. So 2 into C means 2 plus D means how much? D means 1. D means 1. D means 1. B equal to 2 to the 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 upon this 2 comes down. B equals to 5 over 2. Now let us write the value of A 
A means one. A means one. B means B means B means five upon two. So we write instead of B five upon two. And C means C means two. C is two. Okay. This C is two. And D means one. Okay. We write D as one. Now please take the screenshot of this. I'm going to erase this all. Okay. Since there is two in the denominator. We cannot have a chemical reaction or chemical equation with the numbers in the denominator. So we should eliminate that by multiplying with number 2. Let us multiply the equation with the number 2. So 2 1s are 2C2 two as 2. Okay. Plus 2 into 5 by 2 is 2 and 2 gets cancelled and 5O2 remains here. Equal to 2 to the 4 CO2 plus 2 1s are 2 as 2 O. Okay. Now this equation is balanced. Let us check. 2 to the 4 carbon and 4 carbon here. Hydrogen is 2 to the 4. This 2 is for both the elements. So 2 to the 4 hydrogen. We have 2 to the 4 hydrogen. 2 for the 10 oxygen. We have 4 to the 8 oxygen and 2 oxygen here. So the equation is balanced. Let us take another example to understand this again. Okay. Suppose Potassium chloride KClO3 is heated to produce potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Okay, potassium chloride is heated to produce potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Let us balance this. This is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay, now potassium, potassium. We have 1 in the subscript of potassium, so 1 into A is A, okay, equal to, in the right hand side, we have 1 in the subscript of potassium, so A equal to B. After that, we have another element, chlorine, chlorine, isn't it? So we have 1 in the subscript of chlorine, there is no number, means 1, 1 into A is A, equal to, in the right hand side, 1, 1 into B is B. Okay, another element is oxygen. Oxygen. There is 3 in the subscript of oxygen. 3 into A is 3A. Equal to, in the right hand side, 2 into C is 2C. Okay, now, let us consider A is 1 because A occurs 3 times here. Let A equals to 1. That means B equals to 1 because A and B are equal. Therefore, B equal to 1. If A is 1, then B equals to 1. Here, B equals to 1. Here, 3 into A is 1 equal to 2C. So, C equal to 3 1 the 3 upon this 2 comes down. So, let us write the values of A, B and C. A is 1. B is, B is 1. So, B is also 1. So, C is 3 by 2. C is 3 by 2, isn't it? Now, since there should not be 2 in the denominator, so let us multiply by 2 to eliminate the number from the denominator. Now, 2 1 the 2, 2 KClO3, when heated, produces 2 1 the 2 KCl plus 2 when multiplied by 3 by 2, 3 by 2 into 2, the 2 2 gets cancelled, so 3 O2. This is the balanced equation. So 2 potassium, 2 potassium, 2 chlorine, 2 chlorine, 2 3 the 6 oxygen and 2 3 the 6 oxygen. This is how we balance the chemical equation. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you liked the method and understood the concept which I tried to teach you. I hope you understood how to balance the chemical equation. I hope you understood the law of conservation of mass and more concept. Now we will proceed on to the more um, chemical calculations in the next video. Please stay tuned.